Every single one of us has seen something so devastating that it has broken us. Maybe it's something quiet, a mother kissing her kids goodnight in the back of her old station wagon, or something even more shocking, a man literally starving to death on the street. And when we see things like this, most of us feel it deeply. But we manage to pull ourselves back together and go on with our lives. But thank God there are people on this planet like Narayanan Krishnan who cannot. He comes from a life of privilege, but he shuns the cultural belief of some in India that says that men and women who are destitute, homeless, struggling, or suffering from mental illness are untouchables, unworthy of compassion. But he sees them as equal. That is why he cooks for them, feeds them, cares for them, and offers them the simple dignity of a bath. The sight of the hungry, the sick, and the homeless broke his heart to pieces. But he took those pieces and built a life for himself, helping people in need as their friend. I saw a very old man. He was eating his own human waste for hunger. I thought, what is the purpose of my life? What am I going to do? In a star hotel, I feed all my guests. But where in my hometown, there are people who are living even without food. I, I quit my job and I started feeding all these people from 2002. Today morning we made uh, ven pongal and sambar. Ven pongal is a blend of uh, rice and dal. And for the lunch we made uh, tomato rice and sabji. fed the homeless, mentally ill destitute and the old people who have been left uncared of the society. People are suffering for food. They don't have food to eat. If you don't give them food to eat, they will die out of human hunger. I cut their hair, I give them a shave, I give them bath. For them, to feel psychologically that they are also human beings, there are people to care for them, they, are, they have a hand to hold, hope to live. Food is one part, love is another part. So the food will give them physical nutrition, the love and affection which you show will give them mental nutrition. Brahmins are not supposed to touch these people, clean these people, hug these people, feed these people. Everybody has got 5.5 liters of blood. I am just a human being. For me, everybody are same. What is the ultimate purpose of life is to give. Start giving. See the joy of giving. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present CNN hero Narayanan Krishnan. Good afternoon to everybody. I am very happy to be here for the wonderful arrangement made by TEDx Gateway. Hope you all enjoyed your lunch. <laughs> because whenever I see anybody, I don't ask them how you are. I ask them, did you eat your food? I just wanted to share some real life story which happened in my life. I had a very good school and college days. I did not disturb my professor in the school and college. I was working for a five-star group of hotels in Bangalore. It was very nice. Seeing the job, seeing the work performance, they were supposed to uh, send me to Europe on a four-year bond. When I called my uh, house in Madurai, I, I, I told my mom that I'm going to go to Europe. She said, take about uh, four days leave and uh, come and be with us. Let us go and uh, do some uh, pujas in the temple. So I came, uh, came uh, to my hometown in 2002. 
I was driving the car. My father was sitting near me and uh, my, my mom and my sister. While we were going towards the temple, I saw a very old man having his own human waste for hunger. He was literally eating his own human waste on the road. I have never seen such a situation in a television or read in a newspaper. I immediately stopped my car and went to the nearby hotel and asked what is available. They said idlis. I bought uh, four or five idlis and gave it to that old man with a bottle of water. Within seconds, that old man had those idlis and gave me a look of gratitude. His eyes was filled with tears. It was a silent revolution of uh, self-realization which made me to think, what am I exactly doing? I went back to the, uh, went back to the temple and I was not able to uh, worship God. I did not know what exactly was going on. I again came back uh, to my house, made some curd rice and gave it to him that afternoon. He added with full of joy and no words. He did not say anything to me. So the four days when I was on my holiday, I was uh, doing that and again, I went back to my hotel and uh, I was totally restless and I was not able to do anything there. I quit my job, I came back to my hometown with the little amount of savings I had, I slowly started feeding all those people, mentally ill people and old people who had been left uncared on the road. Nowadays we have uh, blueberry, blackberry and a lot of mobile phones, those days only landline. My friends who went to the Europe uh, called up the landline and uh, they spoke to my dad saying that Krishna did not come, he got frightened. My mom and dad uh, got really disturbed and they went to their friends and relatives to ask exactly what was going on to me. And uh, their friends and relatives guided my father and mother to take me to, to a psychiatrist, put me under medication for some time, or take me to a priest where somebody would have done black magic in the family and if they do some puja, it will go away. <laughs> and I told my mom, without you, I am not in this world. So please come and see what exactly I am doing. After that, I am ready to take any medicines doctor gives. So uh, taking my uh, word into cognizance, my mom and dad came, what, they, what I was doing, and I requested them to come out of the car and uh, give food to the old people who are there. So when my mom served food to the people on the roads, the old people touched the foot of my mom and said, now we are able to eat three meal a day only because of your son. After coming back home, my mom said, Krishnan, you feed all these people. I will feed you till I am alive. So that was the real encouragement uh, my mother gave. Slowly, I, I, I had a kitchen with a few helpers and so slowly started feeding, uh, cooking food and giving, distributing to all the people on the roads. I was very particular to distribute food for mentally ill people and old people who are being left uncared. In 2004-05, I witnessed a lot of mentally ill men having long, long hairs on the roads. Thought, what is going to be the solution for the problem? I approached uh, a few local barbers. Few people came. Some said, I don't want to uh, touch these people's hair and clean. I will lose my customers. Some people said, their hairs are stinking, uh, I can't do that. But few people accepted to come and do it. But what happened, the mentally ill people seeing barbers are strangers, uh, the mentally ill people were running on the east side, the barber were running on the west side. It was a running and catching game going on on the road. So to solve this problem, I went to a barber shop, took hair cutting training for six months, and uh, I have learned almost about 10 to 12 varieties of haircuts. And so far, uh, to close to 3,000 to 4,000 haircuts, I have uh, done to people on the roads. In 2005-06, I witnessed a uh, lot of people dying on the road. They die on the road and uh, uh, nobody takes the body and cremates. So to solve that problem, I slowly started cremating dead bodies on the road. And so far, I have cremated 456 dead bodies left uncared on the road. In my association, the Brahmin community, they said, you are a grandson of uh, great Krishna here and grandson of Venkatrama here. You are not supposed to do this. Uh, being a Brahmin, being the sac wearing sacred thread, you are not supposed to do it. You are, you are from a very big community. I said, if the sacred thread is going to stop the service, what I'm doing, I don't want to wear it. In 2005-06, I removed uh, the sacred thread and put it in the fire. I am not a Brahmin now. I am only a human being. If any caste, creed or color is going to stop my service, I don't want to be. If uh, people are going to say human beings are not supposed to do it, I am I'm going to declare I am an animal and I want to help only my people. In, again, in 2007-8, uh, uh, I witnessed a lot of mentally ill women are being uh, taken for a ride by the society and they are being uh, harassed. They give uh, birth to kids on the road. To solve this uh, situation with a small piece of land which my grandfather gave and what all uh, savings I had, uh, my chain, my bracelet, I removed everything. I sold that and with the help of few corporate companies, I purchased and registered almost about 3.2 acres of land in outskirts of the city in the name of the organization. 
and now we are building a rehabilitation home for all these people in a 24,000 square feet building. Almost 80%, 60 to 80% of the project is done. Uh, every brick by brick, granule by granule, we are being able to do it only by the support of public donations and well-wishers from all over the world. I can tell you, once when that project is over, Madurai district will be free of mentally destitutes and old people on the road. I started, uh, I started feeding with one. Now we are feeding almost about 450 people, three meal a day, non-stop without any break, rain or shine. In Madurai district, there are not even one single old man dying out of uh, hunger every day. Nobody is left in hunger. We are feeding everybody. And uh, recently, uh, I won an award uh, by US, in US government. CNN gave me an award, Real Heroes uh, 2010, out of 100 countries. 10,000 nominations, Akshaya was being selected as top 24, top 10, and now we are in top two of the world. <laughs> the first Indian to get uh, the Hollywood award was A.R. Rahman, and I am proud to say, uh, representing India, I was the second Indian to get the Hollywood award in US last November. <laughs> My dear friends, I am humbled to say that I am not carried away by the Hollywood award or by the limelight. If you see me after 10 years, maybe I would have reduced 5 to 10 kilos of body weight, but the interest I have towards the society to care my fellow human beings will never go from me. Till I am there in this world, the last breath, I will save my people, I will try to help them, because everybody has got 5.5 liters of blood. We do not know what is going to happen the next second. So please visit our website, which is akshayatrust.org. We want to, uh, not only, I don't want to stop it in uh, Madurai, I want to uh, do it for entire Tamil Nadu and also entire India because I believe every, every city, every street has got Krishnan. Only thing is we have to find out where he is, motivate him and bring him to the limelight. So thank you so much for uh, giving an opportunity to be with you. For all the encouragement and kindness you are all been giving to me. Uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm only 30 years uh, old. I see a lot of uh, old people. Young, uh, elder people in front of me, I just want your uh, blessings to continue the service. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Naren, Naren, kindly stay on the stage. Kindly stay on the stage, please. I request you to stay on the stage. It's, it's very important that uh, today, as an individual, more importantly, as a son, he feels vindicated about his decisions and his parents feel proud about his endeavors as well. It's a very special moment for a certain Krishnan, but more importantly, it's a very special moment for somebody else as well. So could you please call upon on stage? Please. I've His also, father is present I've, over here. I've also uh, brought my father today. First time he is coming to Mumbai. Sir, can you please come on stage, sir? Good evening to everybody. I am very much proud of having my son, <laughs> Mr. Krishnan. Thank you, sir.